All right, I invite you to stay and turn to hymn 668 and join me in singing Doxology. Praise God from Welcome you this morning. Good to see you in the house of the Lord and also wish you a happy new year. Praying that this year ahead will be a, a, a great one in your walk with, with Jesus. Uh, this is the way to start it right uh, by gathering with God's people. And it's nothing like gathering with the church family. You know, we've been out and about, uh, holidays, traveling, we've been with family and uh, sister churches uh, while we were out. and. But uh, the whole time I was thinking, there's no place like home. You know what I'm saying? There's no place like your home church. And, uh, you know, you can learn and glean and gain from uh, worshiping in other places. But for me, uh, this is the only place that I would want to be when it comes to going to worship. And uh, I'm glad to be here. And I'm glad you're here this morning. And uh, just pray the Lord will bless and encourage you. If you're visiting today or one of our special guests or a family member who's uh, visiting uh, over this holiday time. We're glad you're here. Uh, take a moment and fill out the guest card there in front of you and drop it in the offering plate here in a moment. And uh, we just count it an honor and joy to have you worshiping with us this morning and, and hope you'll choose to do that often. Uh, uh, it's just good to be a part of a church family. And we hope you'll consider maybe God's calling you to invest your life here at First Baptist. Well, we've got a lot of things happening, but number one, I want to give a shout out and a praise the Lord for our international mission offering. Uh, if you'll note there, we have given $13,373 to the international mission offering. And uh, man, that's, that is awesome. Uh, you know, our best year was last year. Uh, very best year in the history of our church, 14318 And for this year to come, to the offering to be what it is is just amazing and uh, I commend you thank you for praying and giving as the Lord would lead and uh, and this is a worthy investment uh, this supports our missionaries who are out there uh, in difficult places and uh, and for us we had the joy of knowing some of those missionaries uh, the Hanson family uh, serving uh, in the Ukraine area uh, uh, the Tatar people group, and then we have the Perkins family, and so we are fortunate, and we've had the, the Craig Mile family who have served uh, through our international mission board, so we have, we have those folks we know, and we know the faces, and I thank you for supporting uh, so honorably, so God bless you for that. Uh, just remember, Deacon, meeting tonight, this Wednesday, several meetings, take note of that. Uh, Next Sunday, 2 o'clock, we're going to have a chance to shower some love on our expectant family. Uh, be praying for Kevin and Gabrielle uh, Welsh uh, as they are anticipating the arrival of Chloe Grace. Next Sunday at 2 o'clock, we're going to have a little baby shower for them in the fellowship hall. So go buy Babies R Us or Target and, and let's just be a blessing to them as they are on, a, on an exciting adventure. And so come and and just bless them this coming Sunday. Uh, be sure you pick up your offering envelopes uh, that are available on the Welcome Center area, and also your contribution statements for the 2015 are available. You can pick those up in the same area, so please do that. Let me just say thank you. Uh, our son Paul and Tiff his wife Tiffany had to leave early this morning, headed back to Quantico, but 
they were overwhelmed yesterday by your kindness and showering them uh, their newlywed shower. And uh, so thank you. Uh, I just want to speak as my family, uh, thanking you, my church family, for just being so kind. And uh, we just appreciate your love uh, that you show to them. And uh, it was a great opportunity to challenge this young couple of why the church family is so vital, why it's so important. And uh, thank you for what you've done. So uh, I just want to say that on their behalf since they cannot be here with us. So God bless you for that. Well, as we pray this morning, we have some special prayer matters to, to keep before the Lord. Uh, please continue to pray for uh, the Charles, uh, Charles Sr.'s family. As you know, uh, Linda's brother uh, passed away this week in a very tragic situation. Uh, so keep Linda in your prayers and her family. Uh, also, I saw where uh, Gerald Minch uh, had passed and uh, be praying for his family, lift them up to the Lord uh, during this time. And then uh, we've had several uh, been in and out of the hospital here recently and surgeries. Uh, let's keep them lifted up. I know Josh Smith had surgery Tuesday. He's home recuperating. Keep him in your prayers. And I don't know how we're going to handle this, but Susan is going in for knee replacement Tuesday. So uh, church will probably just fall apart over the next month or two. She's not going to be here keeping uh, us in line. So pray for Susan uh, as she will be going in for that and, and pray for a miraculous, uh, speedy, uh, quick uh, recovery uh, for Dave's sake and our sake and, uh, you know, everything else. So, so uh, let's keep her in prayer and, uh, and let's pray for one another. Uh, let's do that right now. Will you join me in prayer? Lord, uh, we say it sometimes out of, uh, maybe sometimes we, we say it and we forget how much it means, but Lord, it is certainly good uh, to be gathered in this place with your people, our church family. Lord, we thank you for what you've given us. We thank you for the love. Uh, we thank you for the, a place that's a place of encouragement when we are facing difficult things, going through hardships. We thank you for kindness we feel. We thank you for a place that uh, demonstrates unconditional love Father, I pray that we in this year ahead will continue to grow in our love for Jesus so that we might love one another uh, in a deeper way. Father, we thank you for the many blessings that we've experienced last year. Uh, thank you for the good offering the church family has given to our missions. I pray you'll bless that, bless our missionaries who are serving so faithfully. Lord, as we begin this new year, this first Lord's Day of 2016, we pray this worship service will be a time that we really um, examine our walk with Christ and examine what we're holding on to, that today as we look at the scriptures and see the unshakable things, as we live and dwell in a very shakable world, please help us to examine if we're really holding on to things that cannot be shaken so that we will not be shaken. Father, bless our worship time. Bless your people that are gathered here this morning. We come with many different emotions today, feelings. It's been an exciting holiday season, <clears throat> but for some of us it means family going back to their regular routines and uh, separated from certain loved ones. So Lord, just help us that we might worship you because we need you this morning. Father, we pray for the Charles Sr.'s family, Gerald Minch family, just bring great comfort to them. We pray for those that have had surgery recently, continue to provide your healing. And Lord, especially be with Susan as she has this surgery Tuesday. We thank you for her. We thank you for her, the diligent service she gives to our church family as our, as our church secretary. Uh, bless her, Lord, and, and we pray that it would give her some long-lasting uh, benefits. So bless her, Lord. Father, we ask now that you'll bless our time together as we worship you. Lord, magnify your name. Jesus, we want you to be exalted today. Please exalt your name among us. Help us, God, that we might worship you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand once again. Turn to him 456. How firm a foundation. How firm a foundation. 
your fellow brother and sister in Christ. and 46 the church's one foundation and we'll sing verses one and three Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we, we thank you for your power and your strength, Father. We thank you for your glory that you gave us, Father, by sending your Son to die for each and every one of us. And we just ask that during this next coming year, Father, that your perfect will will be done in our lives and that we won't be anxious, that we'll just wait for it. And I know that's hard for us to do at times, but um, I just, just hope that we will give you time just to work in our lives. And Father, um, we also thank you for just the many blessings that you bestowed upon us this last year. And we know that what we have comes from you. 
that we should not be anxious about that as well, that we should just have faith that you will provide for us and as well with this church as we take up the tithes and offerings this morning. Father, <clears throat> we know that that comes from you. And Father, I just ask that you'll again be with us this year and just strengthen us so that we will um, know your son in our lives better this year. Ask all these things in your son's name. Amen.
Well, I first want to say a thank you to uh, all of you who uh, prayed for our youth group as we were gone uh, for a few days this week for our winter retreat. Uh, we took a group of about 20 to Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia for Winterfest. And uh, let me tell you, it was a great trip. Uh, in fact, uh, one of our students uh, came to faith in Christ as his personal Lord and Savior. And uh, coming up soon here, he'll be joining the church and wants to be baptized. And um, we're following up with his family this coming week. Uh, so thank you for praying for our group. Uh, we all made it back safely. Had a great time together and uh, rung in the, the new year worshiping Jesus together. Um, it was just incredible to be there with a group of about 8,000 people total in that arena, all singing praise to Jesus uh, all night long, and uh, it was fantastic. So thank you all for supporting it and for praying for us. Um, also, uh, I want to take this uh, opportunity to introduce to you our newest staff member, uh, Ben Allen. Uh, he's no stranger to our church. Uh, he uh, came through our, our student ministry, and uh, he's in college now, and uh, now he's going to be serving for the next year as my ministry intern and helping out in our youth ministry. So be in prayer for Ben, and uh, I've asked him if he would uh, come and do our scripture reading this morning. All right, today I'll be reading from Daniel 4, 3. How great are his signs, how mighty his wonders. His kingdom is an eternal kingdom. His dominion endures from generation to generation. May God bless the reading of his word. You may be seated. This song, um, first time I heard it, it really, it really just spoke to me. Uh, and I, we heard it played at Winterfest, and, and Kyle looked over at me and said, we need to do this song at church. And I was like, it's already on my list of things to do. Um, so this will be our song for the month of January, and maybe into February. Uh, it just speaks, it's simple words, but it really speaks to uh, how good our Father is.
in my little band called Casting Crowns. I don't know if you know them. I don't know if they've made it to the big stream yet or not. Um, but what they did something that really spoke to me. And I think it's something that every Christ-centered church needs to start doing at the beginning of a new year. They sing the song, We Fall Down. We lay our crown at the feet of Jesus and we cry holy. So I want to sing that right now. You sing this with me. We fall down, we lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus. The greatness of the greatness of his mercy and love. His mercy and love at the feet. At the feet of Jesus. We cry holy.
as they're making their way to Children's Church this morning. I ask you to take your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12. This morning being the first Lord's Day of 2016, I'd like for us to take a moment and examine if we are spiritually equipped and prepared and ready for the year ahead of us. Uh, next Sunday we will begin a study in the book of Proverbs in which we'll be examining the principles that are taught there in Proverbs about life. It's amazing how unique God's Word is, how it's so true to, for guidance and direction. If we'll just invest ourselves in the Word, uh, it will answer a lot of the questions about God's will, God's way, and direction for us. This morning I want you to note here in Hebrews chapter 12, the writer, inspired of the Lord, writes these words beginning in verse 25. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of of those things that are being shaken, as of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Now, when we look at this passage of Scripture, you note the emphasis about the things that are shaken and then the thing that is unshakable. Now, as I look around, and especially as we look back at 2015, I think we can all agree and we're quite aware that this world is, is very shakable. Life is very shakable. As we were traveling home to Arkansas, made our way through the storms, we're listening to all the tornado warnings and watches as we were driving through it, uh, hearing what was happening in Texas, hearing what was transpiring in the state of Mississippi. Since then, we've all seen the devastation of, of the flooding that has just devastated parts of Missouri. We realize how quickly life can change. I mean, in a matter of minutes, moments, Think about those folks in Texas that, that had invested their lives in their home, uh, in everything they had within a moment, in a minute, gone, totally wiped out. Every possession, cars, things of material value, totally destroyed. Things that were worked for possibly for years and years that are totally, totally gone. It shows how shakable life is, how quickly things can change. In our church family, 2015 has been a year of shaking for many of you. It has been a, sh a, a year in which you have been shaken to the core. Some of you have battled some health matters that when this year started, you never dreamed this would be a year like it turned out to be. Some of you have faced the sorrow and grief of loved ones who have passed. When this year began in 2015, you didn't know what this year would hold. It, you had no idea this would be the year that this would take place in my life, in our life, as a family. It has been a year that you've been shaken. Many have faced changes in life, career changes, job changes, uh, family changes. I mean, it has been a year that you have found some real shaking going on in life. And you understand what this means when he said that, that this world, this earth has, has been shaken. It is shakable. And the Lord says one more time, I'm not only going to shake earth, but I will shake even heaven. And so we see how shakable life can be. We see how things can change so quickly. So as we begin 2016, we need to make sure we're holding on to something that is unshakable. 
We need to make sure we're holding on to some things because I don't know about you, I, I realize this life, this world is just like standing on uh, shaking uh, sand, sand that is, is moving, it's, it's moving out from under my feet. Uh, the foundation is not stable as far as this world is concerned. And I need to hold on to something that will see me through the shakable moments that this year may hold. Only God knows what we will go through this year as a church family, as individual families, as an individual. Only the Lord knows. How do we get through it? How do we hang on? We need to hold on to something that is certain. I believe there are four things that the Bible describes as unshakable. And if we'll grab a hold of these unshakables, it will help us through the shakable moments of life. Well, the scripture says there in verse 28, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace, by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Well, that shows me there's, there's something or someone that's unshakable, and that's God. We have a God that is unmovable. We have a God that is unshakable. We have the privilege of serving Him, as, as the writer says in verse 28, that we may serve God. We live in a shakable world. Our life is going to be shaken. It's already guaranteed. It's going to happen, folks. This world is going to be shook by the hand of God. So I need to hold on to the God who is shaking the world. He's an unmovable God. He is uh, an unshakable God. Even in Hebrews, in the next chapter, verse, thir uh, verse 8 of chapter 13, listen, it says about Jesus, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Our Savior, who is God, God the Son, He is the same. He is unchangeable, unchanging. He's unmovable. Over in Malachi, the Bible describes our God. It tells us about Him. It tells us how He is and, and His constants and how consistent He is. But listen to this in Malachi chapter 3 and verse uh, 6. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6. Listen to this definition or description of our God. I, he's speaking, for I am the Lord. I do not change. He's an unchangeable God. He is the real God. He's the genuine God. He's not Allah God. He is Jehovah God. He is Yahweh God. He is the God of all gods. Are you holding on to that God? Because He's an unchangeable God. I need to hold on to something that's not changing. Because life is changing. Life changes. Family changes. Jobs change. Career changes. Wealth changes. Uh, health changes. I need to hold on to a God that will not change. Not only do we see about this God that He is unchangeable in His nature, but also He sits upon a throne that will not change. This week as I was out and about, first of the week, I was listening to, uh, I think it's 107.5 out of Falmouth, if you like good gospel music, and they have good preaching every now and then on there, and Charles, no, not Charles Stanley, uh, uh, well, I forgot who it was, but somebody was preaching, and uh, they, they caught my ear. And... Uh, I think it was John MacArthur. He was preaching out of Isaiah chapter 6. And he was reading that passage. And you know, the, you know the background. The king had died. The king who had served for 52 years plus had passed. Isaiah was feeling a little discouraged. I think the people of God were feeling discouraged. It had been good. It had been a time of blessing. But the king had died. And so the Lord opened Isaiah's eyes to see him to see God. And Isaiah wrote these words. He said, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, sitting upon his throne. It was as though God was reminding Isaiah, listen, the king may be dead, but the king of kings is still alive. I am your God. I am the one to hang on to. The Things may change. Who is king may change. Leaders may change. But I am still sitting on my throne. And I think the preacher went on to say, we need to recognize that God is still on his throne. No matter what is happening in the world, no matter how, unsh how shakable the world is, God is still sitting on his throne. And folks, when I look around and I listen to the news and I see the devastation of, of weather and, and I see the issues of finances and I see leadership that's lacking uh, around the, the world, I'm thankful I can look and see there's a God who still sits on the throne. Are you holding on to this God? Do you know this God? 
Are you looking to the one who is unchangeable and unmovable? Are you really recognizing how awesome and worthy he is? Isaiah, when he sees the Lord, he hears then the angels. And you know what they're singing? They're singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. I tell you, he is an awesome God. He is a God that we can know. He's a God that we can cling to. He's a God we can hold on to. He is never changing. He's the same. And I'm thankful that in this shakable world, and not knowing what the world or the the year holds, I know the God who's in control. I hope you're holding on to this God. I hope he's real to you. I hope he's more than just a concept. He's more than just a fact. He's more than just knowledge. I hope you see him as as a real, vibrant reality that is living, that he's real to you. He'll see you through. As we face this year together, hold on to this unchangeable God. But not only do I believe that God is unshakable, I believe his word is unshakable. His word is unshakable. Listen to what Jesus said about it, the Word. Listen over to Matthew chapter 24. Hold your place there and jump over to Matthew 24, verse 35. And listen to what it says. Concerning God's Word, Jesus made this statement. He said, heaven and earth will pass away. Well, is that not what the writer of Hebrews said? He said, not only is God going to shake the earth uh, one more time, but He's also going to shake heaven. Well, Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away. He's agreeing. Scriptures are in, in accord. But Jesus goes on to say, but my words will by no means pass away. And so if that be the case, if everything is shakable except God and the Word of God, then I need to invest some time in this book. You know, we need to see that the Bible is unique. It is unique. It is one of a kind. There's something so marvelous. When we think of the Word of God, it is the God-breathed Word. And are you investing in it? Are you reading it? You know, in your bulletin, Miss Susan, week after week, make certain. You notice in your bulletin, and this is a good reason to get a bulletin every week. But look right there. Two th- well, we've got to update that. Two th- 2016 through the Bible. Man, Susan, I don't know what I'm going to do with you. But... Uh, <laughs> Reading through the Bible. Now notice that. If you just take your bulletin every week, every morning, just say, well, you know what? Tomorrow, Monday, January the 4th, it tells you where to read. Genesis 1 through 3. You know what will happen if you'll do that? If you'll just read that section every day and just take some time every day, just say, I'm going to read God's Word. I'm going to read God's Word. Just read it and just let it speak to you. Let it minister to you. Just learn from it. Read it like... Man, it is a, it's a treasure. Man, if I told you that out on your land or where you live, that if you'll go to a certain spot and so many degrees this way and that way, and if you'll dig down, you'll find a gold nugget. I tell you what, we'd all be leaving right now, headed home, start digging, wouldn't we? We would be excited, the joy, the thrill of the uh, excitement, knowing there's something there, we'd be digging down. Let me tell you something, God's Word is a jewel. It's treasure. And every day, if you'll just read that, that's part of Scripture. By the end of the year, this time next year, we'll come in here and you'll say, you know what, Brother Brad, I read through the whole Bible this year. That's how simple it is. And as you do that, invest time in reading God's Word, it'll get inside of you. God will give you guidance. He will show you that it's a Word that is true. It'll give guidance about decisions in life, choices to make, directions to go. I mean, spend time daily. Get serious about it because Jesus said this word is unshakable. And we're living in shakable times. So invest in something that is not shakable. And you'll turn to this book and you will find answers to many of the problems that you face. How do Christians get through the heartaches of life? How do you get through hardships? How do you get through challenges? You get through it by seeing God's instructions in his word you find hope you find help from the word get a hold of the bible hold on to the word of god it is unshakable now let me give you a third one a third thing that the bible says is unshakable guess what it is the church the church of the living god you say where do you find that well 
Let's go back to what Jesus said. Matthew chapter 16 and look at verse 18. Matthew 16 verse 18. Listen to what he says concerning the church. I say to you that you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. What is Jesus saying there? He is saying that the church will endure. The church, we are the church. When you're saved, you become a part of the body of Christ. We, the living believers, are the church. We make up the church. And Jesus said, the gates of hell will not stand against us. The church will endure. The church will con continue. Uh, it has been attacked. It has gone through difficulty. It has gone through all types of things. But Jesus said, the church, the real church, the genuine church of all the believers will endure. It's unshakable. That's something we ought to hold on to in this new year. That means not only should I get a hold of the God of all gods, not only should I hold on to the Word of God that is enduring and, and will never, never fail, I need to also get a hold of the body of Christ. I need to invest my life in the body of Christ, in the church of the living God. You know, we are a local church. Uh, there's a universal church. I understand the Bible teaches that every person that has ever been saved is a part of what we would call the universal body of Christ. But the Lord emphasizes in the word the, the local visible church. You know what? Over these last couple of days and weeks as I've been away visiting my family and uh, we, we sat in on a, on a worship service while we were uh, away uh, over the holiday. But you know as I sat there I began thinking... Uh, if I didn't go to my own church, where would I go? You know, I ask myself that question. Where would I attend? Where would I go worship? And you know what? You know what I came back to? I would, I would come right here. <laughs> I would be right here. If I wasn't your pastor, this is where I would worship. This is where I would study the Word. This is where I would invest my life. I mean, I, I was thinking about that. Of all, I have, have a choice to go anywhere where I would go, and I'd go here. And you know what that is? That's a family. It's the family aspect of the church. As a Christian, I need you and you need me. I need your encouragement. You need my encouragement. I need your fellowship. You need my fellowship. We, I need your prayers. We pray for one another. We love one another. We see one another through the hard times and the good times. The church is vital. In a day where there is such despair, in a day where it's discouraging, and, and things are falling apart and families are falling apart and we get disillusioned about the certain things in life. We recognize there's a constance. There's something about the local church where I find help and hope and encouragement. This year, would you consider investing your life even more in your local church? Being that part that provides encouragement to others, being available, being present, we need to take hold of this that is enduring, that's lasting. As my son and his bride were at the newlywed shower yesterday morning, I spoke to them in the beginning. And as I shared with you last week, you know, Paul's always been our out-of-the-box kid. Some of the things that he, just, he's an impulsive individual and spur-of-the-moment individual. And, and you know, last year when he and... Tiffany uh, were married. We, like I told you, we didn't know till a few months later. I think he was scared to death to, to tell us because he was trying to hint around last Christmas and we weren't hearing clearly and he didn't speak clearly. And, you know, when I got the word, I was a little shaken. I was like, you know, as daddy, I want to be in control of things. And I sort of like, I didn't get to be in control of this deal. And uh, it was sort of a shaking moment. And you have questions. Why? You know, are there other motives? Are there other reasons? And you work through all of that and you say, find out. Said, no. The young man said, I believe this is the one and I'm committing my life and, and we've made the decision. And so I've, I've grown to, to understand that and respect that. But yesterday as we went in there and sweet ladies had put that together on the spur of the moment, it gave me a visible opportunity, visual opportunity to share with them the church. And I told that young couple, I said, this is, this is another reason why you want to plug your lives into a local church. You want to invest your life in a local church. You need the local church for encouragement. 
for edification, to guide you as a young couple, to help you in your new walk of faith, in your new uh, marriage. And I said, as you look around here, you see there, these, are, these are ladies of this church that have been sacrificed time, invested time. This church has showered with you with love. That's a picture of the church in action. And I thank you, church, for allowing me to have a visual to be able to share with my own son and daughter-in-law what it looks like. And folks, we need to see in this year ahead, the church is unshakable. It is unmovable. The church, the living church, the body of Christ, and I want to be a part of that, and I want to hold on to that while everything else is shaking. So the church of God. And then last of all, one more, the kingdom of God is unshakable. That's what he says here in Hebrews, verse 28. Since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. And then he says, for our God is a consuming fire. He says we are a part of a kingdom that's unshakable. You know, you can look at history and see the great kingdoms, the earthly kingdoms that have come and gone. It looked like they were unshakable. <laughs> they looked immovable. But every one of those kingdoms, they fail. Some of the greatest kingdoms on earth fail. But there is a kingdom that is unshakable. It's the kingdom of God. That's why Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Folks, let's, let's be patriotic. You know what I mean? We're, we're, we, we were born in this country. We're, 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 we're citizens of the United States of America. We ought to be proud of that and recognize God's blessings and hand upon us and pray for this nation and pray for God to be merciful to us and revive us again and, and give us leadership that will guide properly. But folks, let's remember that we are a part of a greater kingdom. We're a part of the kingdom of God. This nation, the nations of the world are shakable, and we've seen it in our own nation. It is a shakable time in our own nation. But the kingdom of God is unshakable. His will, His plan is progressing. It may look like we're on the losing side, but we're not. We're on the winning team. We are aligned with the winning kingdom. We are a part of an unshakable kingdom. And so take hold of that. Recognize you are citizens of a heavenly kingdom. And due to that, do what He says. Serve God acceptably. Do it with reverence. Do it with godly fear. Recognizing God is an awesome God and He's a consuming fire. We are a part of an unshakable kingdom. Are you a part of that kingdom? Has there been a time in your life where you have, have become a part of the kingdom of God? That you have yielded your life to the king of that kingdom? His name is Jesus. Have you done that? Wednesday morning, I had Paul and Tiffany to come to my office because, I, George, I was going to get a little word in on this marriage one way or the other. And I thought, since I didn't get to do pre-counseling, I'm going to do some post-counseling. So I told them, I want you to be at my office a certain time. We're going to sit down. We're going to talk about some things because there's some little keys to marriage that I want to invest in your life and talk to you about that I didn't get the opportunity to do it in the beginning. So we sat there in my office and I talked about the three areas of marriage that can, can cause struggles. We talked about family, talked about how in-laws can become outlaws and how to deal with that. We talked about finances and about being wise and, and uh, I had to really, because my son is an impulsive kid and and talked about being cautious, you know, credit debt and school debt and just being wise and using wisdom and stewardship. But then I shared with them the number one. I said relationship. The key to a healthy marriage is a relationship with God. It's almost like, I don't know who came up with it, but it's like the old triangle illustration. As you're both saved and growing in your faith in Christ, you're growing closer to Jesus, you'll also grow closer to one another. A love that is strong. And so, as I shared with them, I, I, I spoke to each one of them individually. I said, the key is, have you settled the matter of your faith? Do you know Christ? Have you been saved? And I don't take that for granted, even for any child, any kid. As I told you a year ago, my oldest son was, got on his knees in my office and was saved. 
we thought he was saved as a kid, but he came to the realization that he wasn't. And so I spoke to my son, Paul, has there been a time? He said, Dad, I, I'm, I'm saved. He said, I've made choices that were not right. I have not honored the Lord at times, but I know that I'm saved. God won't let me get away with my sin. He convicts me. And then I spoke to Tiffany. Tiffany has a background. She grew up in a family that was Catholic. And, uh, you know, we're learning, getting to know her and her family. And, uh, and I asked her, Tiffany, what about you? And folks, I realize there are, there are people that are Catholic that are saved. They're saved in spite of what Catholicism teaches. They are. And I said, Tiffany, what about it? And she began to weep. And she began weeping there in my office. And she said, you know, Brother Brad, she said, the things that I've heard from, from your preaching and from when Paul and I have gone to church, she said, the things that I'm hearing, I've never heard before. And she said, if those things are true, it just seems unbelievable. That's what she said. She said, if that is true, it just seems unbelievable. I said, what do you mean by that? She said, it seems unbelievable that God would forgive me of my sins. That He would forgive me of my sins. And that He would offer me a free gift of salvation. She said, that just seems unbelievable. I've never heard these things before. I've never heard these things before. And she said, my problem is, there's so much in that book that I don't understand. I said, well, there's a lot in that book I don't understand either. I've been at it a long time. I said, Tiffany, the key is, it's not battling what you don't understand, but have you acted upon what you do understand? Tiffany, do you understand your sinner? She said, yes. Do you understand that Jesus Christ is the only way to be saved? Yes. Would you not like to yield your life to Him, even though it seems unbelievable? And she said, yes. And we got on our knees there in my office and we prayed. And this young lady yielded her life to Jesus. You can do the same thing. That's how simple it is. I know it seems unbelievable. <laughs> Shouldn't you have to do more than that? That's too simple. It's so simply amazing. You can do it today. You can get a hold of the kingdom of God and take hold of something that's unshakable by yielding your life to Jesus Christ today. Wouldn't you like today to do that? If you're here and you say, Brother Brad, that's me. It's too good to, be, to believe. It's almost too good to be true. But, but I want to act upon what I know. And I know I need a Savior. At this invitation time, we're going to ask you to just step out from where you are and come and say, today I want to give my life to Jesus. Christian, if you need to come and just say, you know, Brother Brad, I've been holding on to stuff that's just like the more I squeeze it, the more it's sliding out of my hand. I need to get a hold of something that's unchangeable, <laughs> that's stable. And today you need to rededicate your life to Christ. Say, I'm going to start the year off. I'm going to get a hold of my God. I'm going to invest in His Word. I'm going to invest in His church. I'm going to invest in His kingdom. I'm going to get a hold of some things that are unmovable. Why don't you come? And say today, I want to I wanna just re-surrender, recommit, rededicate, whatever word you want to use, but I want to get serious about Jesus. Would you come this morning as we sing this invitation? We're going to stand together. Our song we're going to sing is hymn number 435, one we know, Just As I Am. And if you would like to come, aren't you glad you can come just like you are? And He'll change you and you'll leave <laughs> unlike anything you can imagine. He'll save you. Why don't you come as we sing? Come and receive Jesus today.